Hello, everyone. So welcome uh, from the bottom of the heart. I am uh, Catherine Blish. I'm one of the co-directors of the Stanford MSTP, along with Katrine Chua and all our associate directors. And on behalf of the MSTP and the neuroscience program, I'd like to welcome everyone to the Jonathan Leong Lecture. And um, first, I would uh, like to particularly thank uh, Susanna Jonathan's mom, who's here today, who has made this uh, really wonderful thing uh, possible. And um, I'm going to not um, say too much because I'm going to turn it over to Tom very soon. But the one thing I do want to mention is that as part of this lecture, there will be snacks. And who doesn't like Oren's hummus? Um, so Oren's will be over in the LKSC Herb Garden. So we're looking straight at LKSC just across the road. There will be a reception with a gray tent. And we'd love to have uh, people visit and think more about Jonathan during that time. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Tom Clinton to talk a little bit more about the lecture. Yes, yeah, so uh, just to reiterate what Catherine said, welcome to the second Leong lecture. Uh, this honorary lecture celebrates the life and scientific passion of Jonathan, Dr. Jonathan Chitsing Leong, a Stanford MD PhD student who graduated in 2017. Jonathan uh, grew up in Lincoln, Massachusetts. Uh, and as a child blessed with perfect pitch, was a musical, musical prodigy who played violin at concerts around the country, including at Carnegie Hall. Uh, armed with a focus and intensity to match his interests, uh, Jonathan took his freshman seminar at Harvard with Nobel laureate David Hubel, who both ignited Jonathan's love of neuroscience uh, and became a trusted uh, lifelong advisor. Jonathan's passion for the field uh, first took him to Martins Reed, Germany, where as a Fulbright scholar, uh, he studied plasticity in the visual system at the Max Planck Institute of Neurobiology before uh, coming here uh, to begin his graduate work as part of the MSTP. Uh, he, at Stanford, um, he continued to study the neuroscience of vision uh, in my lab uh, and made crucial contributions to our understanding of how the brain processes motion and revealed surprising parallels uh, uh, between how the computational processes that underpin motion vision arise in animals of very different uh, evolutionary origins. Seeking to bridge his love of neuroscience with his deep desire to help patients, Jonathan set his sights on becoming a clinician scientist uh, who would do interventional radiology uh, and develop new approaches to understanding the human brain. On match day, uh, the day when medical students learn where they'll be comp completing their residencies, uh, Jonathan matched to his first choice of schools to do his medicine internship at Brigham and Women's and his residency at radiology at Mass General. Tragically, on the same day, he received a devastating clinical diagnosis of met metastatic glioblastoma. Unlike many um, who would be deterred from their goals, uh, Jonathan pressed on, knowing that he could have an impact as a clinician and reasoning that he could not let his disease prevent him from reaching his goal. He therefore moved to Boston and began his internship while undergoing intensive treatment himself. There, he worked on the wards for as long as he could, inspiring both patients and hospital staff and faculty with his compassion, altruism, and dedication. He passed away on April 10th, 2019, at the age of 36. Jonathan was uh, an intensely creative, thoughtful man um, with an incisive wit and an infectious laugh and a deep love of food, as I think you can see from many of these pictures. Um, hence, the snacks will always be part of this lecture. Uh, and after his death, his parents, extended family and friends created this lecture. Uh, so that the story of his life could be shared and so that his passion for science could be honored. Uh, with that, I will turn the podium over to uh, Varun Shankar to introduce today's speaker. Thank you, Professor, for those kind words. Um, and we're all here in memory of Jonathan. Thank you to his parents as well. Um, it's my true pleasure to introduce our speaker for today, Dr. Wendell Lim who is the Byers Distinguished Professor um, in the Department of Cellular and Molecular Pharmacology, as well as the Director of the Cellular Design Institute at UCSF. 
Dr. Lim has won numerous awards for his groundbreaking work and was previously named to Wired Magazine's top 50 people who are most likely to change the world. He is considered one of the pioneers of the synthetic biology field, his group focus, whose group's work focuses on studying design principles of molecular circuits, understanding how they give rise to emergent behavior, as well as applying those principles to rewire new cellular molecular programs. Um, the title of the talk today is Learning to Program Cellular Systems and Therapy, so please give Dr. Kim uh, a limbo a great welcome. <laughs> Okay, great. Well, uh, thank you very much uh, for, for this honor. It's really a, a great pleasure to be here. I've had a great day visiting uh, to see old friends and to uh, meet new ones. Um, and so uh, I, I didn't know Jonathan, um, uh, but it turns out that we are actually quite connected. Uh, I've had um, three Stanford MSTP trainees uh, who were fellows in my lab, shown on the right-hand side, Ashley, Greg, and Phil. Um, who were contemporaries of, of Jonathan's, as well as two other colleagues, Ashish Mangalik and Kevin Yackel. Uh, and so, you know, um, and had, talking to these people, I felt like I got to know Jonathan a little bit. Uh, they mentioned several things, his uh, unusual and infectious laugh, um, as well as his uh, incredible dedication uh, and curiosity as a scientist and as a physician. Um, and so, you know, although I didn't know him, I feel like, uh, you know, we are connected and that, that, you know, we easily could have, it would have been a pleasure to, to work with someone like Jonathan. So what I'd like to tell you about today is our work on um, trying to understand um, kind of how, how cells are built and how they work and how they talk to each other and how this gives rise to a lot of the amazingly precise and complex biology that we see. And I'll also talk about how we're trying to take this understanding and apply it to various uh, translational goals uh, to uh, improve um, uh, various diseases uh, with unmet needs. Um, so what I want to first uh, talk to you about, and this is an example here, this is a movie from Alex Ritter uh, showing, uh, you know, just how amazing living cells are as entities. This is a, a migrating T cell, and you have many of these bodies, these uh, cells moving around in your body right now. Um, and uh, you know, how, how do these sorts of behaviors arise and, and, and what, what, what kind of biology do they give rise to? Uh, 